Dr. Homebrew is brought to you by Five Star Chemicals, providing safety and cleaning supplies for brewing, distilling, and winemaking at fivestarchemicals.com. Dr. Love. Stand aside, nurse. I'm Dr. Homebrew. Everybody, it's Dr. Homebrew. Here we go. It's September. We're here drinking beers. We're here drinking homebrewed beers. Um, I don't have a commercial beer in front of me, Brian. Do you? I have. It's not a commercial beer in this room, man. This is homebrew, homebrew, homebrew. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I did have a Scotch ale. I believe it was uh, maybe an eighty shilling or whatever. It's like a five percent really? Scotch ale. It's on tap. I forget who the brewery. Um, it's fine. I, but I, I forgot I forgot about how Scotch Ales I'm trying to stupid music out. I forgot how Scotch Ales work and like I was halfway through it and going, eh, there's not really not a whole lot here. Mm-hmm. Um and then it started warming up and I was like, Oh, well, there are some flavors. <laughs> okay, that's cool. <laughs> I just I forgot all about it. It's it's rare that you see a five percent scotch ale around, so um <clears throat> I took a gamble, it's pretty good. That's one of my favorite beers to make. Uh, or I guess was I sold my brewing system in favor of the Pico Brew Z that I'll be Hell getting yeah. soon. But man, the the one of the great things to do is you, man, you run off that wort and you get that kettle nice and hot, and you boil down that first gallon or two down to like this syrup, and then it just yeah. it's, it's unfermentable, but it gives you some body, and you just make like <laughs> this great four or five percent Scottish ale. I will miss that about my old brewing system. Yeah, I was thinking about that also. Um, I, Terrence, uh, our old friend there, is uh, using my system. I keep trying to get <laughs> stupid Terrence. I keep trying to ask him. I go, dude, buy my. You should buy my system. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. How much? You know, it comes with conical. I'm like, oh, you know, this is the price. And then he just won't say anything. And yeah. He goes, he goes. Let me ask Becca. I'm like, dude. Uh, 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 he, 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 okay, fine. Ask Becca. That's fine. And then he won't reply back. Yeah. Uh, and then it's like months go on. Hey, dude, did you buy my system? Oh, yeah. Um, how much was it? Dude, you, oh my God! Okay, let me ask Becca. Just, dude, rip me a hundred dollars a month, dude. Like it doesn't matter. I don't need the cash, but I just don't want you using my system without me paying for it. Well, exactly, because I, I, I don't want it. I don't want to have to go through the effort to sell it. Yes, and I know you're already using it, so buy it. Although he can get the milk for free, as it were, it's already over at his place. So. Apparently, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell him like bring it back. Mm. If you're not gonna buy it from me, bring it back right now. Although you know, I was thinking about with Scottish ale and the pico yeah. is that you know, there's nothing that would stop me from collecting a certain amount of wort from that pico system, uh, putting that in a pan in a saucepan on my stove. Of course, it'll be less than I'd have to do for a 10 gallon batch size. Obviously, yeah. Boil that way down just like I would on my big system, and just pour that back in. I mean, there's nothing to stop me from doing that. That's true. Frankly, there's nothing I could probably do... steep some grains and do that exact same thing and make like that syrup, uh, the unfermentable kind of long-chain sugar stuff that gives me that Scottish ale effect. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. Uh, I was Way back when Chris Graham at More Beer was talking about um, doing like a Belgian Golden Strong mm-hmm. and uh, pulling off a couple gallons of wort and like... Uh, basically making a marinade for steaks and mm. ribs and shit. I'm like, ah, that could definitely work, man. That could definitely that. work. I'm going to wave to Max. Hi, Max. All right. We're going to get Max on the line. He's our first guest here for tonight. And we have a uh, Pilsner, and it says Pilsner question mark. Again, this is uh, Brian's... Uh, wait, why would I... Yeah, I'm going to call free on Skype, dude. Duh. Um, Brian's doing Brian's doing the booking right now, so this is his notes, Pilsner question mark. And I would get untold mountains of shit if I had mm. if I had done that. Max isn't online. Why is Max not online, bro? What's up with that? The entire internet has gone down and it's just us sitting by ourselves talking to ourselves in this room. Let's just call him I'll call him on like his actual telephone and see what's going on. I think Max is in Canada right now. 
I think, you know, that's where I think where he lives, but... Uh, <laughs> well, that would explain why he's there right now. Right. Eh, we're Maybe ringing. the tariffs. That's right. We have to pay a bunch of tariffs. Um, okay, well, I'll tell you what. Max, if you're listening, homie, um, just go ahead and Skype me. Uh, but Brian's going to... Remember, I only have one Brian here today. The other Brian, Brian Cooper, is out sick, taking care of his sick family. So I got uh, Brian Shar here. Bruh. It's always sad to only have one Brian. You're always optimized <laughs> when you've got like more than one Brian at a time. That's true. Absolutely. Um, well, then you're redundant also. In case you lose a Brian, you got one to fall back on. Well, and who doesn't need Brian redundancies? You know what I mean? Everyone needs Brian redundancies. Yeah, five one. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, let's get through. Uh, let's get through Max's beer. And if he calls, then uh, he calls. And if not, uh, then we won't talk to him. That sounds good. Then we'll just make stuff up. So this is a one B, I believe it is. One um, B American Lager. Yes. Uh, so uh, aroma. You know, uh, aroma is malty with uh, definite rice uh, aroma in here. Uh, no hop aroma. Very low uh, fruity esters, almost like a fruit salad. Gave it a 10 out of 12. Uh, what's interesting is sometimes people make the uh, uh, American lager with the rice adjunct. And the rice adjunct can be very overpowering flavor and aroma-wise sometimes. The amount in, yeah. in this is, I think, just just right to blend in with the, with the malt. Uh, appearance. The one thing that I, I thought was a little off-putting and that I actually had uh, uh, Jason pull out the second uh, bottle for was this is almost like a rosé uh, wine color. Yeah, it it's, is. Uh, there's definite reddish-orange character to this. It's not just like a, uh, a classic American lager flavor. And I'd be curious. I hope Max calls. So I want to talk to him about maybe what he thinks the origin of this is. Uh, all I can imagine is maybe the rice. But, you know, it's brilliantly, brilliantly clear. No head. Uh, so I gave it a one for appearance. I knocked mm-hmm. off a point for the color and a point for kind of the absolute lack of any any head on this. Yeah. Uh, Which it is a cool color. It is a very, it's like, very like cool a color. very, very light rosé. Exactly. Um, but, I, yeah, I wonder what kind of rice he used. Because if it was white rice, and he, he said in his notes he just he wanted to use rice flakes, but he didn't have any, so he just cooked some rice and used that. Yeah, who who knows? It's uh, but if it's why I mean why would it? Maybe in Canada the rice is pink. <laughs> Maybe it's like red rice or yeah, some be, heirloom it's, it's rice. It's Entirely possible. Wild mm. rice. Yeah, there's there's a lot of different kinds of rice. It's not all cow <laughs> rose. Yeah. Uh, not everyone irrigates the desert to grow rice. <laughs> That's so, true. Uh, well, they, they should. <laughs> Only if they have water. Uh, flavor is dominated by uh, rice and a hint of malt. Mm-hmm. I think it's the flavor overall is very light. Uh, don't really get any hop flavor and extremely low uh, hop bitterness. It's very well attenuated. Uh, balanced definitely toward the, the malt and rice, uh, which is also what the, the finish uh, is. Really don't get any flaws in the flavor at all. I mean, this is, as people always say, this is a style you can't hide, hide behind. There's right. nothing here. There's not like tons of hops or malt you can hide stuff behind. So very well executed in that regard. I gave this a 15 out of 20 for flavor. Mm, yeah. The um, mouthfeel, body's low, which is to be expected. Carbonation is also super low, much almost flat, uh, much less than expected for style. This should be a highly, highly carbonated style. Uh, you let, you, just let's not, pop the third one just because. Okay. Because we got it, and we'll see. Let's do it. And while, while he's doing that, I'll keep on yapping about this, uh, this beer. Uh, there's no warmth, which, again, it's expected for this style. Uh, we can run up on that mic. There's some hiss. It's not bad. We got a... I would call this you know, maybe... This is... Because of the lack of carbonation, I might call this creamy. Uh, definitely not uh, astringent at all. Uh, gave this three out of five, uh, primarily because of the really low carbonation. Uh, hmm. Overall impression, you know, seven out of ten. There's no flaws other than the color, which, as I said, is a little off-putting when you first see it and you're expecting an American uh, American lager. Uh, the rice character comes through without being overpowering or obnoxious. Uh, you know, I think it actually it's a really, really well done amount of rice, just how the rice was added, came out real well. Uh, and actually, I did say no, the, the low carbonation is a problem. All right, Jason just poured me the, from the third bottle, so let's have yeah. some dead air for a second while we drink beer. I mean, there's, there's some carbonation in this one. It's still very, very low, but there's some there. It's a little more... It's a little more Fritzy, 
uh, than the other two bottles. Def- definitely agree. And it yeah. may be that, that you know, the sample that I was drinking probably had about this level of carbonation 30 minutes ago when I mm. judged it. Uh, well, I remember opening that second bottle, and I didn't hear a hiss at all. No. So I wonder if... Uh, and what you were drinking was out of the second bottle. I was drinking yes. out of the first bottle. Okay. Uh, so I think that, uh, yeah, whether this is bottle conditioned or off a keg, uh, you know, the, at the end of the day, the color is one point, right? The color... Yeah. And here's an interesting thing about judging and competition. The color <clears> is one point. But when, when this got poured, there's a little inside baseball of Dr. Homebrew... We poured a sec- from the second bottle thinking, this is just a weird color. I wonder if this beer is okay. And when something happens that's even a one-point difference from what you expect, then you start to wonder, well, what, is, what else is going to be wrong or different or unexpected about this beer that's not going to have it be according to style? Right. So it's, it's really, you know, appearance maybe only counts for three. Mm-hmm. But in some ways, it counts for a lot more because it puts the judge in a mindset that may not be where you want him or her to be. Oh, absolutely. As the entrant. For it's the for the very first thing, yeah. the very first representation of your of your beer. It's not the aroma. Right. It, usually they're not opening the bottle. Right. I mean, maybe they see it, but that doesn't really mean a whole lot. Um, you, we have you Max taste with your eyes first. Oh, yeah. We have Max yeah. on the line. Max, oh. are you there, dude? I am. How's it going? Hey, good man. How are you doing? Wonderful. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. I'm glad you uh, you caught that uh, you missed the call and you're able to join us, man. Thank you very much. So uh, we're almost done with the beer, but, uh, you know, we'll recap in case you missed it. And, uh, you know, we got we got a few questions for you for sure. Yeah. So for the for the recap, you know, we thought it was uh, overall pretty well done. Total score or final score is 36, which I think is a uh, it's a good score. It's in the very good range. Yeah. Uh, The two things that were a little odd. uh, The one thing that was odd for us was the color being kind of a rosé wine color almost. And the carbonation was also really, really low. Uh, when this, this is a style right. that calls for the high carbonation. So we'd love to... Explain uh, yourself, Max, yeah. <laughs> in, right now. The doctor's homebrew need to make an okay. accurate diagnosis uh, here. <laughs> sure, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was, for whatever reason, having really hard trouble with the, uh, with the beer gum for that. Um, I, uh, I moved to the keg, which is always a dumb idea. Um, <laughs> I tried to crank up the... Uh, the PSI, and uh, tried to use Blickman beer gun to get it across, and yeah, no, it uh, foamed all over the place instantly. Oh no! Interesting. Could not stop it. Um, yeah, so I, I filled a bunch of bottles. I just poured myself one here, and you're absolutely right. It is uh, flat. But there's yeah. what, this. I happened to your carbonation, and it all went out in the foam. Hmm. Yeah, that's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, that is. Yeah, because, uh, you know, like Brian's saying, this is definitely a style because there's nothing going on, really. Yeah. Um, Flav- flavor's good. <laughs> flavor's yeah. good. There's well, I mean, really like, no flaws. Aside well, hopefully you're drinking it piss warm, too, right? Uh, oh, of course. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we, we put it under the lights for four hours beforehand. Stuck my wang in there right. for a while. Just <laughs> right. To... right. Um, so let's talk about the color real fast. Yeah. What okay. Do you think, what's uh, what kind of rice did you use? Uh, how did you get that uh, nice rosy color? <laughs> that that uh, I, I was out of flake rice. Yeah. Um, so I said, well, from what I've heard, flake rice is essentially just kind of like torrified rice, which means it's like cooked and then dried out or something, right? Mm-hmm. And then I said, well, I don't really have time to dry it out, um, <laughs> so I'll just cook it. And throw it in. And, uh, yeah, so I used whatever we had around the house that was somewhat whitish. I wasn't sure if it was basmati or jasmine. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that it's basmati rice. Mm. Um, And I I threw that uh, in the mash tun. Is it a pink color? Is it a pink color? No, the rice is... Like it's white, it's right? white, right? Yeah, I just, I just wanted to make sure uh, because I, I just, you see what I'm saying? Like yeah. you, you see the color, right? It's... Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. Um, so what I'm pretty sure that is is um, I added gelatin to the beer to to clarify it, okay? Um, because it wasn't as clear as it normally is, and then um, when I moved the keg, it just kind of stirred everything up, hmm. and so when I was bottling actually coming through the bottling wand was gelatin. So I don't know if you can see it 
from the bottles that you have there, but in the bottom of the bottles, it's actually got like gelatin guck in the bottom of mine. So cherry or strawberry um, gelatin? <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, no, cherry no, or not, strawberry not gelatin? Not cherry, yeah, it huh. just knocks uh, clear gelatin. Okay. But, yeah, I can see it's kind of like larger suspended particles in my beer. Yeah, I don't see I don't that. You guys have any left? In ours. I don't see that in ours, but, uh, you know, I mean, there's, yeah, there's. Uh... It'll do weird things refracting the light, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Well, you know, uh, holding it up, Brian, um, it is murky. Yeah, which is interesting because the beer itself, the sample, is uh, really, uh, really clear. Yeah. And I, I wonder also if part of this has to do with, you know, I've. I'm not super familiar with basmati rice. I'm familiar more with the jasmine rice. But I wonder if there's something when you cooked it, that there was some reaction between the rice and the malt that maybe ended up with a pinkish color, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not a chemist, oh. but I can imagine that could happen. Yeah, that's not the case. Um, I've okay. still got, like, a bunch of gallons uh, on tap right now. And when I pour it, it is just crystal clear. Like, all the... Gelatin settled back down. It's in a keyser at seven degrees Celsius, and uh, and yeah, it's just it's just as clear as can be. But it got a right. ferocious head on it because so, uh, of all the protein from the rice. I'm pretty sure. Jeez. Okay. So the gelatin must. Yeah. So we're getting kind of the exact opposite of what you're drinking off your keg <laughs> yeah, right now. Right. Which is, yeah, yeah. No, which but happens. I've, I've poured a bottle. Like I put one aside to have the same experience, and I'm absolutely on on board with you guys. I've seen the exact same thing. So yeah. what's funny is if this is a 36, that must be like a 50-pointer you're drinking at your house. <laughs> it is not. I <laughs> okay, 48. I you know, shouldn't, shouldn't, uh, <laughs> shouldn't be crazy. Uh, Max, do you have the recipe there? You want to share that? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, it's pretty simple, other than the bed of batty rice. That uh, is, uh, uh, one pound, 11 ounces of that. Mm-hmm. Um, pre-cooked weight. Okay. Uh, I also had six pounds, 12 ounces of Canadian Turo made by OIO and, uh, put that in mash, mash that for an hour at 150 degrees Fahrenheit, um, with, uh, five gallons of water looking for an absorption rate of, uh, two li two liters per gallon or something like that. Anyways, it, it was um, I added three more gallons to sparge or do batch sparge on it. Okay. Um, boiled it for sixty minutes um, with uh, 0. 0.7 ounces of Hollitower hops at three point six percent alpha acid. I got it to an OG of one point oh four one, and it tasted good. Let it uh, threw it in a fridge that I've got uh, hacked for fermentation temperature control and uh, let that sit there for a day. Oh, after I like four chilled it, um, let that sit for a day to bring the temperature down to pitching temperature, which was roughly 10 degrees C, which is like 50 degrees F. Okay. Sound good, Brian? Sounds uh, great. All right. Then uh, I've got a typical lager. Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell you. Um, the yeast that I pitched in it is uh, actually the Y yeast, uh, Hellebach yeast. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I've heard I of really that, like, but never played well, with it. It's a yeast that I've kind of cultured up, um, and it's I make helluses out of it um, that turn out pretty good, um, and just happened to be the lager yeast that I had on hand, so it's like, it's not exactly the style, but maybe with the um, two-row being kind of American-Canadian would be enough. Mm -hmm. So it's got an interesting little bit of a more multi flavor, I think, than I was expecting. I agree. Um, I think, I think I it, agree there's too. definitely a character there, too, and I, I think the rice is helping with that also. Yeah, the rice definitely gives it some, some added complexity, and it is just the right amount to be... Uh, a complement to the malt and not something that overpowers or becomes kind of dominating or unpleasant. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it, it, it turned out interesting. Yeah, um, definitely. The yeast, the Hel Hellebach yeast itself did a way better job than I was expecting it to do. Um, and it brought down the, uh, 
the final gravity of like 10.002 or hmm. 1.002, which was you know, quite surprising. So it, I was originally going for uh, a light American lager and it ended up kind of being 5%. <laughs> that's five percent that's five percent wow yeah it's pretty Nothing well there. done man yeah absolutely cool a- absolutely do you have any questions max for for brian at all or feedback's uh, enough so i'd like to kick it up to the next notch and do some water mm. adjustments um i don't have a fancy uh, water chemistry kind of kit here, but mm-hmm. I do uh, have been playing around with brewing water <coughs> using my water reports. Um, all my water here comes out of Lake Ontario, mm-hmm. so it's pretty much consistent year round. Um, it's fairly soft water. The uh, only thing, like m- most of the actual minerals, are pretty low, mm-hmm. but the uh, the um, alkalinity is pretty high. So I find myself fighting with it. Um, and that's why I, I typically stick to loggers because they're pretty, it's, it's pretty okay for loggers. Yeah. But when I've tried to do like IPAs or, or um, porters or anything like that, it just doesn't have the right mouthfeel at all. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I think that you know, for this beer, there's no reason to adjust the water. This beer is, I think, really, really well made. Mm-hmm. And I don't see any advantage to messing with the water for this. As you were saying, you brew a lot of lagers because that's what your, your water is suited for. Uh, mm-hmm. do, you, do you have a water report from your city or your county or your area? Yep. Okay. So that and that and you said that, that's what's telling you your water is generally soft and it's pretty consistent year to year? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Year to year, it's been consistent. Well, the two years that I've been looking at it, I've only been brewing for like two and a half years, all grain stuff, um, and only really looking at water reports um, for that amount of time. So your your best practice. So I'll I'll kind of go in order of your of of best practice here. So best practice is to know what's in your waters. Use something like an eye dip to analyze your your water, so you know. When you're brewing, what's actually in there, you really are dialed in on what to adjust. Because if you don't know what's in there already and you start adjusting, you're going to end up with way too many minerals and your beer can be like licking a rock. And it's just <laughs> I've, I, I've had beers like that when people don't know what the start is, um, and then they try to adjust. Okay. Now, there's two ways you can kind of know what you're starting from without using an eye dip, and it's you know, a less preferred practice. And the one is you... Start with distilled water and you build it up uh, totally from scratch. So that's kind of fraught with peril because then there's a lot of some of the trace minerals and things just don't manage it into your your, your beer, and that's not always the, the best thing to do. Yeah. Now, if you have reports, if, if your water is always from the same, I, I live in a similar type place, but my water is pretty much the same. Eleven months out of the year. Aside from the one month they're cleaning out the system and we get water from the next uh, water district <laughs> over for that, that month. And you can, you can taste it in the water. You just either I, I don't brew then or I just pay attention to what, what, what's going on in the water. If you, have, if, if you have a consistent water supply year over year, you can roll the dice and just put that into brewed water or whatever your spreadsheet is and adjust your water accordingly. Um, essentially, you're going to be adding uh, 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 sulfates or adding gypsum. Uh, for those IPAs and things to really make that that pop, uh, you're going to be adding like calcium chloride, uh, other direction for more malty beers. But you're going to be essentially adding like like gypsum, and the thing is just not to overdo it. But it, if, if you're consistent and you're willing to, uh, 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 and, and you're comfortable enough with your water supply that you you're pretty sure it's going to be the same all the time, I would just plug mm-hmm. that stuff into Brune Water, get whatever it says to uh, to do. Do it and then see what happens. Right, and and as far as the alkalinity that I've got, the um, according to Brewing Water, the estimated bicarbonate that I have is like 110 parts per million. Um, which it, do I only need to be concerned about that for acid dosing, you or know, will that have an effect on the overall kind of flavor and minerals that go into it? 
you know, I'm not the water chemistry guy. Uh, Damn it, Brian. It's, uh, I, I'd say read, read Palmer. On, I love Palmer's book, but, man, that book is complicated. Um, frankly, yeah. I, I have. I have, and I'm trying to make sense of it. So yeah, three more reads before I get any better. Yeah, yeah. I, kind of, I had to wrap my head around Z-alkalinity uh, quite a It took me a long time to get my head around that. Oh, I'm sorry, still not you, sure. You meant the water book. Yes, yeah, yeah, the water no, book. I was just talking about the chapter oh, in uh, How to Brew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might want to stick to that then. But yeah. You know what? I, I, my understanding is that 100 uh, ppm bicarb is actually not as – I've heard stories of people that have like 300 bicarb. You know, you're, you're probably not – doing that bad hmm. uh, okay i would say just go with uh, uh go with what brune water or palmer or someone recommends you do uh and just give it a shot you know it's, it's part of the okay. point of home brewing is just trial and error right trial and error hmm. uh see what works for yep. you you know you've, you've made these and you haven't been happy with them is kind of my impression uh and so just try some try something else man try putting in some do, do some acid adjusting, you know, do some, uh, add some gypsum, see if those IPAs come out the way you want. Um, and if not, do something mm-hmm. else. Do you do a, a 5 or 10-gallon batch or a different size batch or like a metric? I guess that would be like a 20-liter or 40-liter no, batch. I do, uh, yeah, I, I do 5-gallon um, batches. Okay. Um, and sometimes I'll do a double batch. So just single batch. You know, worst case, you're throwing it out. I mean, who among us has not dumped a batch of beer? I've never done it. Really? Well, you're I'm just kidding. that good. No. <laughs> I should have, hmm. but I just hand it off to people. Yeah, I've been that camp, too. <laughs> Does our malpractice insurance through the show cover the loss of a five-gallon batch of beer, Jason? I don't even know where to start with how false that statement is. <laughs> Do we get malpractice through the AHA or the AMA? That's right. kind of the thing I've got to wonder about. Google that. Exactly. Um, anything else, Max, or, or uh, if not, we'll let you go. Um, no, that's all. I look forward to hearing what you guys had to say. And <laughs> cool. I think you guys were very generous on this part. Yeah. Such a flat beer. It was yeah. really my. It was really my doing. I wanted it at all. Well, it, well aside from the flatness really. and a little bit of that, the color. It was uh, flavor wise and aroma wise, really, really well done. I was really right enjoyed on. it. Yeah. All right, Max. Well, thank you for that. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. All right. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Yeah, Max uh, tried real hard to get us beer. I mean, he's in Canada, obviously, and yes. that's not cheap. It's not a cheap shipment. No, it's not. So, uh, you know, kudos to him for, for getting us his beer. Okay. Now, this would have been well over 40 if we're sitting in his living room drinking this in Canada. It sounds like Lake it, Ontario dude. Ontario yeah. or something. It'd be pretty nice. Yeah. Crystal clear, no color, big yeah. head. Like, yeah. that sounds great. That sounds great. All right. We're going to take a, a, a break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to speak with Walter. He has an American double IPA for us to uh, get through. So hang tight. We'll be right back. Hello, fellow BNers. This is Sully from the 21st Amendment Brewery located in San Francisco, just two blocks from Giants Park. Before Nico and I opened the 21A and before I was a professional brewer, I homebrewed on my small four-burner apartment stove in a back house in Santa Monica, California, making my extract brews before graduating to the daunting idea of all-grain brewing. Homebrew books and information was hard to come by back then. The internet hadn't been invented yet, along with other things we take for granted today, like electricity and potable water. One thing I wish I had back then when I was learning was a radio show that could teach me the ins and outs of brewing and answer questions that I had about homebrewing, a resource for making great craft beer. The 21st Amendment Brewery is excited to be a proud sponsor of Dr. Homebrew, a great show that teaches you what you need to know about making incredible beer. Good stuff. Listen up. You might learn something. I certainly did. And thanks for your support. Tasty Crack Games. Do you know the three most important rules in brewing? Sanitation, sanitation, and sanitation. And no one does it better than Five Star Chemicals. Five Star knows sanitation. You can only sanitize clean equipment. And Five Star knows how to clean, too. For craft brewers and home brewers, Five Star has what you need to keep your fermenters, serving tanks, kegs and draft lines sparkling and free of any beer-spoiling bacteria. PBW, caustic, acid cleaners, star sand, Santa Clean, lubricants and defoamers, pH stabilizers, and more. Five Star Chemicals has cleaning supplies, safety supplies, heat exchangers, pumps, hoses, and valves. And Five Star is proud to offer eco-friendly products that exceed customer expectations. If you 
you have a cleaning problem, you need the Five Star Solution. Visit fivestarchemicals.com or call 800-782-7019. 800-782-7019. And get the Five Star Treatment today. Are you a member of the White Labs Customer Club? If not, you should be. It's the easiest way to earn free stuff for turning in your old homebrew labels from either vials or pure pitch. All you have to do is save your labels and redeem them for things like free yeast, an exclusive White Labs t-shirt or sweatshirt, and even the opportunity to brew with the yeast man himself, Chris White. Signing up is easy. Just go to whitelabs.com slash customer club, fill out the registration form, and then mail in your labels. They will return the favor by sending you awesome White Labs swag. Go sign up today at whitelabs.com slash customer club. White Labs, pure yeast and fermentation since 1995. Now back to the examination. All right. Thanks for sticking with us, everybody. Man, you, let me ask you a question, Brian. When, when you were raising your child, you know, six months or whatever, did you go... When, when I was. When you were, <laughs> well, right. Well, when, when you were raising your... your when your child was six months, yes. right? Um, did you ever forget to brush your teeth for days on end? Or is it just me? Did I forget to brush hers or my own? Yours. Oh, God, no. My, my teeth, if I don't brush my teeth, they're just, like, disgusting in every way, and I just yeah. always have to make time for that. Do you just not brush your teeth for a while sometimes? I forget. Like, I, I, okay. I don't, I think maybe, if I'm lucky, I get once. I get one a day. A one-a-day brush. And so we've moved the, like, the toothpaste and shit downstairs mm-hmm. so I have better access to it. But I can't remember... I can't remember. I'm so I, I have three jobs plus raising the kid. Like I'm so scatterbrained, man. Um, I, I should. I feel your pain, man. It's a pain in the ass. But uh, anyway, we it's, have. It's better. Eventually, she'll be brewing beer. Uh, eventually, you know, probably you know, probably take her you know, eight or nine years from now. But it's she'll true. be brewing some beer. Maybe she'll be brewing beer for you, which yeah. is totally legal as long as you put the yeast in. I just wanted to brush my teeth for me. That's all I want to do. Uh, we have Walter on the line. Walter, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, how's it going, dude? Oh, good. Hi, Walter. That's Brian there. All right, so we have a, an American double IPA. Uh, have you brewed the style before? What's going on with you here? Um, not really. This wasn't supposed to be a double, but I, I kind of you fucked up. Misjudged myself, so I ended up adding some some DME and got it a little bit higher than I planned on. So. Oh, what do you mean? What what uh, what happened? Um. Just numbers were wrong. I thought uh, going into the boil, I thought my uh, gravity was a little bit uh, lower than what uh, it was lower than what uh, Smith said it was supposed to be. So I got antsy and added some TME into it. <laughs> okay, mm. I got gotcha. you. And then uh, and then afterwards, you're like, whoa, that that was <laughs> that was a big jump. Yeah, it wasn't even that big. It was supposed to come out six and a half or so anyway. So I mean, it was just it was just a little bit. Um, I, I, I've got to learn to trust that if I, if I know I didn't do anything wrong to just trust the numbers. Yeah. Cause yeah. I, I know when I do something wrong, you know, something stupid, like, you know, you know, fast barge or something like that, but you know, right. okay. Yeah. Trust the numbers, man. That's uh that's yeah. the hard part about homebrewing. I, I do that too, even though I, you know, now I have the, the Zymatic, but, uh, uh, I still, to this day, I have the re- I have the recipe. I know what it's supposed to be, and then I go to the homebrew shop and, and I go to more beer, and I have to see all the grains. And I'm still fighting that urge from from I, that I've had since I brewed my first batch yep. of like I want to add more shit, but it's not going to come out the way that I've already planned it. So I have to remember remember that it's it's very it's just it's a homebrewer's curse. It's a brewer's curse, man. But yeah. midnight wheat. Yeah, I know, right? But but if I have four, anyway, um, Walter, uh, Brian's going to judge your beer here, and uh, we'll okay. talk about it and um, right. ask you some questions. It'll be a good time, I promise. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, aroma. I first impression, I got some uh, woody hops, like almost a northern brewer character, uh, some caramel uh, slash crystal malt type character, little little pine uh, with a hop aroma, little spice also. Uh, no esters, sort of a lower level of hop aroma than I would have expected for a double IPA, although certainly there's hop aroma there, as it was just uh, uh, saying, with kind of some complexity. 
Uh, and I think the, the aroma of the hops is pretty balanced with the aroma of the malt. So I give it a, a 7 of 12 on the aroma. The appearance, this is uh, brilliantly clear, so good job. Uh, low head, uh, light copper in color, you know, 3 out of 3. Uh, flavor, first first impression I got was a, a slight butterscotch diacetyl. Mm, yeah, I get that too. And it's uh, sort of a malt-oriented uh, on the previous show, we had a, a similar type of IPA, which is more of almost like a 90s character IPA. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It had some of the crystal slash caramel malt, a little more malt character than IPA has today. Uh, so definitely uh, is some, some caramel slash crystal malt uh, character. Uh, high bitterness, but low hop flavor um, in that regard. It's also, definitely more of the, the 90s style that was more bitter than to have the, the, the hop flavor uh, uh, character. It's well attenuated, balances toward bitterness, as is the finish. There's definitely a, a, a noticeable alcohol flavor. So I gave this a 9 out of 20 for, uh, for flavor, primarily because I wanted more hop flavor as opposed to mm. hop bitterness out of the, the double IPA. But the diacetyl did play, play a role in that score also. Uh, Mouthfeel, uh, body is at a medium level, uh, low carbonation, uh, less warming than expected for a double IPA, but there is some some warming. Uh, slight creaminess, no astringency. Uh, gave that a four out of five for mouthfeel. And for overall impression, uh, you know, it's a tasty beer. There's really, aside from a, a little diacetyl, uh, it's a tasty beer. Yeah. And diacetyl is easily fixed with uh, diacetyl rest. You just make sure you bring this, let this come up to like 70 for a day or so before you uh, uh, crash it and, and package it. Mm-hmm. Um, so overall, I mean, it, it's aside from that, and the diacetyl really isn't super noticeable either. In terms of it, it, where is it in this beer from zero to 10, it's around a two or a three. It's not, it doesn't dominate the flavor. Uh, but really, a double IPA ought to be a showcase for hop flavor and aroma, mm-hmm. and it just really wasn't for either one. Uh, so it's it was more malt forward, it's like more malt, more malt crystal balanced. Malt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even even the malt character was good, and there's nothing wrong with that in a double IPA. It's no, just no, it no. needed to have more of the the hop flavor and aroma for, mm-hmm. for style. Not bitterness. Re- exactly. It's, it's yeah. a re- bitterness is perfectly fine. Right. But it's just sort of a recipe issue uh, here, I think. So okay. overall, I uh, gave it a 28, which is a good beer. Yeah. Uh, and I thought it was, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, appreciated having a chance to drink it. So I'd love to hear about uh, your, your recipe and your process. And the same hop bill, I think it might have been closer. What was uh, Say that again, sorry, Walter. Oh, if I would have, if I would have gotten, if I would have, the gravity would have came out to where I originally expected it and I didn't boost up that gravity. As a regular IPA, I think it might have done a little bit better with a little bit lower, lower original, you know, starting gravity in the, in the hops where they're at. I think it might have been a little bit closer to where it should have been. Yeah, it sounds like it. I suspect you're right. Yeah. Uh, do you want to go through the recipe, though, real fast? Oh, uh, yeah. Cool. We got, uh, uh, it was that, um, it was a five and a half gallon batch. It was about 90% of uh, just plain two row. Um Two percent, four ounces of uh, caramel sixty. Um, about f- almost six percent of uh, about twelve ounces of caramel forty. Um, I've been trying to do some water water adjustments. This had about four ounces of uh, acidulated. Our water up here is about uh, uh, out of the tap is about seven point five pH. So I always try to use something to to adjust that a little bit. And then it was. An ounce of Simcoe at uh, at sixty minutes, uh, half an ounce of Amarillo at uh, I'm sorry, half an ounce of Amarillo and a ounce of Cascade at twenty, an ounce of Cascade and a half an ounce of Amarillo at ten, and then two ounces of Cascade at five, and then I dry hopped with two ounces of Cascade and an ounce of Amarillo. The um, the inspiration for the recipe is I had six ounces of Cascade in my freezer I wanted to use. <laughs> That's good inspiration, man. Yeah, how, uh, that how... was it's like I, I've had this for eight or nine months and I'm going to use it. Yeah. Was the Cascade opened or was that sealed the whole time? It. I bought a. Um, 
I had made something a while back. I don't remember what it was, but it called for like it called for like four ounces of Cascade, and it was like two dollars more to buy the pound. Okay, so you opened that up like eight months ago, and then put it back yeah, in your freezer. Was, okay. I mean, it was in a vacuum steel bag, but I used it on like four different recipes too. This was the last recipe I used on it, so mm, okay. it had been opened and sealed a, a bunch of different times. Was it? Uh, it's probably you know too much for for like home guys. But did you flush it at all with like nitrogen to get the oxygen out? No, I just okay. have a, a food saver vacuum thing. I bought it Goodwill. Okay, all right. I wonder how that. I wonder how much that matters. Like, because you're sucking all the air out versus displacing it with nitrogen. I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. I don't know either. Yeah. I mean, to me, I think about. I mean, you put a lot of hops in this beer. It and, was nine ounces or something total. Yeah, you, you put that's a lot for a five and a half gallon beer to not have much hop flavor or aroma come out from that. And yeah. I, I almost wonder like to try this recipe again with with fresh hops out of the you know fresh out of the package hops. Yeah, yeah, and I kind of yeah. think if you would, and, and not to interrupt your your discussion of the recipe oh, yeah. and your process, but it, to me when I, when I heard that, my first thought was that it may explain in conjunction with you adding the the malt extract uh, in the middle. That might explain a lot as why we're just not getting the hop uh, aroma and flavor that you had intended, especially with that sheer volume of hops. Yeah. And honestly, this wasn't the one I wanted to send. It just happened to be the one that I had. Everything else I wanted to send, I had exactly three bottles of, and I wanted to be able to drink it. (laughs) Wow, yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. Um, Where do we leave off with the recipe? We were done? We're talking Um, about the hops. That was it. Just the... um, uh, it's the yeast was just a US05. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know, Brian. What do you think? Are you, are you, do, you have, do you typically use US05? Um. Yeah. I I'm one of those weird ones that actually does a starter when I'm using dry yeast, but usually, yeah. Just um, it's what I've always. If I if I'm not sure what I want to use, I generally actually use O5. Mm. Yeah, there's yeah, it's a good yeast. I don't have a lot of experience with it, but I love the fact that you can just pitch a lot of it because it's dry yeast and it's cheap, and you can just just go nuts with that stuff. Yeah. And I did, I I do starters anyway because it's you know a couple bucks to do a starter. And, exactly. And I I bought myself a stir plate for Christmas, so I you know <laughs> you I, I, I had to over pitch a little bit just uh, you know like I think you know you you guys you know the other shows have always said you know at home you can't really over pitch. So. It's really hard. It, right. it, it's yeah. possible, but it's it's you have to work at it. I think. That's, and I'm that's not right. sure. I've been told really, you know, I mean, to to get a good clean beer, I've been told, you know, the fastest, you know, the faster you can ferment, the better. And usually, yeah. like this one, I think I was at final gravity in three to four days. Wow! Wow! So did you uh, did you do a diacetyl rest on this beer? Um, that one I don't believe I did. Usually, no. Are you talking in the mash? Or are you talking? Now, at the end of fermentation or at some point in fermentation, did you drive it up to, like, 70 degrees for a day or? Um, yeah, I drove it up to – sorry, I have uh, – I actually got one of those tilt hydrometers. I really just used it for temperature. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's really nice. I just – it gets uh, – when you get into active fermentation, it's not quite as accurate as I wished it would have been, but it's still, it's still a really cool tool. Hmm. Um, yeah, I did bring it up to 70 for about three days and then I crashed it. Well, it's interesting that I, maybe it's not diacetyl that I'm tasting then. Maybe it's some other character. Cause if, if you, if you yeah. had it at 70 for three days, that should have wiped out any diacetyl in this beer. Yeah. My, um, I, I got a very small, uh, chest freezer I use and it. It's, I can, that's one thing I can do is I can, I could tell it what temperature I wanted. It stays there. I mean, during active fermentation, I don't I don't fluctuate more than about a degree, degree and a half. What what kind of DME did you use? Uh, just light, light. uh, slight pills and this whatever I use the same thing I used for my starter. I just had some left over. Okay, I didn't know if it was like you know wheat or dark no. or whatever. No, okay, just the basic light. And whatever DME is you it get at this job. Yeah. Scorched, maybe, do you think? Uh, so, was was there, uh, Walter, was there uh, uh, caramel or crystal malt? I'm sorry, I'm trying to think back to what you had said, and I don't remember off the top of my head here. It was, I had used caramel, uh, uh, four ounces of caramel 60 and 12 ounces of caramel 40. 
You know, I think hmm. maybe that's the character that I was thinking of as Butterscotch. Okay. And, you know, Jason, you know, I think your point, it's possible. Was it liquid or dried extract that you added? Dry. Uh, dry. Dried. Yeah, I doubt you scorched it because I'm not getting hmm. really the burned flavor. But now that I think about it, a pound of caramel malt in a, a five, five gallons is a lot. Is, is a lot. And that's probably okay. what I'm – because I'm getting the di- – what I, what I thought of as diacetyl was not getting as the movie theater butter – or the sl- and I'm not getting the slickness, but it was kind of that that toffee butterscotch character, and that's so much caramel malt. Yeah, I, I'm going to walk back my diacetyl statement and think that's just a recipe issue because it, it okay. is it is it, the the aroma is raisiny. I, I think yeah, it's this this raisin. like hop raisin sweetness thing that maybe comes off as diacetyl. Yeah. Because I thought I thought it too. I was like, "Oh yeah, for sure." But it was nuttier. It was um, breadier of a diacetyl, yeah. which I've, uh, which yeah, maybe maybe it's too much specialty malt. Yeah, and I'm just not getting that slickness. I, um, I tend to be a slave to the little sliders on uh, on Beersmith, so I'm like, "Oh no, the color's too low." According to the hmm. thing on Beersmith, I better bring it up a little bit. So I, you know, <laughs> I add a little bit of sixty, and yeah. What would you, uh, Brian? What would you top out at for crystal malt additions in a double IPA? Like five percent? Yeah, I would probably say at, at most. Yeah. Especially, so like we were, I was mentioning earlier. I mean, this is there's an interesting, there's kind of a dichotomy between what you like and what you're going to get judged as in competition. <laughs> that's uh, my entire competition life. <laughs> right. No, that's exactly right. And yeah. you know, if this is the if this uh, is the double IPA you like that has some caramel malt and some fresh hops and, and so forth. Yeah. And that's what you want, and you like to drink that. Brew it and drink it. Right. Uh, now, in terms of competition, what are judges going to expect from a double IPA? I mean, go and grab a bomber from the good beer store near you of any of 10 different commercial double IPAs, whether it's a a, a knee-deep or a a revision or a modern times or whatever they have near you. Uh, And it's going to be, you know, the malt is going to be real simple. It's going to be some some base malt, maybe a little, maybe a little wheat, maybe a little something else. But it's not going to be caramel, uh, and it's going to be definitely much more hop-focused. So in terms of if you're going to be entering this in competition, this could be, even if you, you went back and got you know, totally brand new fresh hops, uh, so you backed off the caramel malt to 5%, it probably is not going to meddle in competition because it's not what judges are expecting. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. And, I mean, on this one, like I said, I, I generally don't make IPAs. Um, I mean, I like them. I just – to be honest, they're expensive to make. Yeah. So, yes. So Definitely. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, I usually do like Amber's. I'll you know, I'll spend you know twenty bucks on a recipe or something. On the on the trying commercial example, it's actually kind of nice. I just uh, I just started a a job at a um, at a store where I'm in charge of their consumables department, which consists of a wine and beer department. So ah, hell nice. yeah, dude. So yeah, you're set. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a pretty pretty good job. Yeah. Do you yeah, have any, been, any openings uh, over where you're hiring? There are places up here that sells uh, Belgian beaver, so I want to go try that. Uh, their, uh, their seasonal IP they have out for the holidays. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, um, so, yeah, I think to Brian's point, it's, you know, if, if you like the flavors, then, then you know, don't worry about limiting your use of the, of the caramel malt. But if you want to try to, you know, lighten that up or get it into a competition for whatever reason, then yeah, then totally consider the, doing that. The extra caramel, which is honestly, I Beersmith showed the slider at the lower end of the SRM scale, so I added some sixty. That's all it was. Yeah, for sure, and you know what, and and that's totally fine, and it could be, uh, I don't know what the the maybe the color on your screen is darker or lighter than it should be, or whatever. Yeah. Who knows what that is? But yeah. um, you know, go by the number for sure, and then uh, you know maybe that's something that you that you notice about your recipes uh, and then maybe they come out a little darker for whatever reason. Maybe you boil a little bit longer or whatever. Uh, yeah, how long did you, you boil? Know. 60 or 90 minutes? Uh, 60. Okay. Right, so yeah. standard boil. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I usually anyway, I don't do 90 unless I'm doing like a pills or a wheat or something. I'll do yeah. 90. Yeah. But other than that, I just, yeah, same I, don't have, I don't have the patience. Well, I guess just, um, well, what, I don't, you tell me, what are you going to do? Are you going to tweak your recipe a bit or, or try it with different hops in the same grain bill? Um, 
think I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to completely drop the, um, the 60, Mm -hmm. just go with the 12 ounces of the, of the crystal 40. I might even go a little bit less. It's, uh, it's at 5.7 now, which is probably close enough. Yeah. But I, I think I might try it and then try it with the, uh, just try with the with the fresh cascade or maybe a different like i said the only reason i use the cascade is because i happen to have it absolutely and and yeah definitely yeah. use a, the f- as fresh hops as possible and you know if you want to ma- are you well are you going to try to make a double ipa out of it or are you going to just do it like a I normal, think it's IPA? A normal ipa i just it just okay. happened to be a double because of that because of that dme for so sure just, for sure and that was the only thing i was going to suggest is if you were going to do a double i would i would suggest replacing that dme with like uh corn sugar like straight table sugar, um, something like that to get that higher alcohol, but reduce the body. Um, cause this is, a, it has a pretty big body. This, this beer for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, man. Well, uh, Hey, I appreciate you sending the beers and, uh, oh, yeah. if there's nothing else for, uh, Brian, we'll, uh, we'll let you go, Walter. No, thank you guys very much. All right. Thank you. Thanks, man. Right, thank you. Bye. Cool. Well, it's nice of, uh, both uh, entrants to send us their beers yeah. and let us uh, talk about them and enjoy them and drink free beer. That's true. Uh, speaking of uh, free beer, I don't know. Uh, Grog Tag, of course, is your one-stop homebrew customization shop. They have it all from reusable beer and wine labels to durable metal signs, high-quality coasters, and everything is customizable. So get creative over on grogtag.com with one of our hundreds of... Of templates and we'll print it on high quality materials and ship it out to you. It's easy. Check out grogtag.com today and use code BN Army to save 10% on your next order. Grogtag.com. They're working on a uh, a new site, the boys over there at Grogtag. Really? Yeah, because the crop tool is kind of weird. Um, I'm not speaking out of turn. Uh, this mm. is, you know, this is the fact. Um, <laughs> But they they're uh, redesigning the site, redesigning, making just a bunch uh, a bunch of changes to make it easier wow. for the flow. And one of the things they're doing is, um, so I, I I say they. This is why I'm, I keep pausing because I'm like am I my so I do some work for Grog Tag, so I can say we mm-hmm. now now it's easier to talk we. about it. Yeah. Oh. Right. Um, so one of the things we're doing is from a, a lot of customers who have said, like, you know, I really just I have a photo because, look, we get a lot of old heads, okay? We get a lot of old people, and they don't understand. I resembled that remark. It's true. Uh, and they go, look, I have this photo. I just want to put some fucking text on it. Mm-hmm. I don't want to upload it in a template. I don't, want to, I don't need anything fancy. This is just like a gift for my nephew or whatever, and I just right. I want to do this thing. Um, and we're like, well, we can do it for you if we have time. We'll, you know, send us the photo, and then we'll add text in Photoshop. But then that gets tricky because it's like, well, what font? Right. And where do you want it? And then we're spending 10, 15 minutes going back and forth on emails. It's just, it's complicated. Meme so, font. Right. So what uh, what they're doing is they're they're adding text boxes oh, to nice. editors. So you can upload a photo and you can just write the thing and you can drop the text box wherever you want wow. on the thing, which is totally new for, for us. So I'm really excited about it. And that should be out. I don't know. I think they're doing beta in like a month. Well, you know, I like the Grog cool. Tag uh, uh, stuff a lot. I've gotten a few things from there, and yeah. I've always found it to be pretty easy. Yeah. And that is a site. It is so graphics intensive. Dude, it and is. There are so many choices. That yeah. is not a simple ma- – <laughs> trying to, to redo anything about that site, that is not simple or easy or quick. No. Uh, so I w- <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that because I, I, I worked for them for a while, a couple of years ago, um, and then I left, and then they brought me back on. Because, like, last year, actually, it's almost been a year now. And they're like, look, only for a couple months. Like, we just need some help, like, you know, covering because we're, we're spending so much work doing the website. And it's been almost a year. Because yeah. it's, it, is, it is a ton of work. A lot of custom coding goes into that website. Yeah. And it's just, you know, you're, you're, when you pick a, a platform for a website, yes. you're handcuffed as to what the parameters are within that. Oh, you God, can do some yes. custom stuff, but if it, do, if it breaches the parameters of Drupal or whatever, mm-hmm. you just, it's never going to be, you, you can't do it. So uh, anyway, we're excited about it. And um, that's some, you know, inside info if anybody cares about website stuff. Let's talk um, about Ruby on Rails. For <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I'm not I think sure I've, I do either. I think I've seen that movie. Can we monetize um, our uh, blockchain uh, cryptocurrency, perhaps? Uh, yeah, yeah, VChain. Let's go. Sure, let's do it. I got some VChain stock. <laughs> or not stock, but 
crypto. Do you have some V chains? Is that like a coin? V chains. That like a thing you can buy shit with? Well, it's like two chains, the rapper, but it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's in the blogosphere. So um, anyway, let's give away the forty dollars gift certificate to Grog Tag, which is the uh, our at least your beer will look good award and that goes to brian do the honors please that goes to walter for his double ipa congratulations Uh, sir you win the grog tag award hell yeah walter i'm uh, i'm gonna email you over the code here in a little bit i mean probably in a couple weeks we'll see (laughs) because i'm bad at that stuff um okay we're gonna get out of here brian we're done are we wait are we i don't know let me see i think max max wins but you know as we've said before you know, by winning, mention. you have the satisfaction of victory, which right. is, uh, of of course, there's no small uh, value ascribed to the, just the value of victory. True, true. Um, no, I'm just making sure. So since Bev isn't here because she's sick, I don't have my show logs, and she texted them to me uh, instead of emailing them to me because she's broken inside. And uh, I just need to make sure <laughs> that um, we well, don't have... Well, while you're doing that, I can try to make sure we don't have any dead air. We can talk about... Uh, Things no, we're like, good. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, the AHA is our last live read I had to do. I apologize for forgetting about those people, but they're lovely people. And, uh, you know, sign up for the AHA, man, because you get, excuse me, you get discounts. You get discounts at over, what, 2,000 places, breweries, homebrew shops, uh, that kind of stuff. Get the Brew Guru app, like Brian was saying on the last show, and uh, always have it to push. So wherever you are, you get those push notifications. You're walking around downtown, wherever the hell. Uh, save a couple bucks on some apps or whatever. Does the Hop Grenade have uh, have that uh, program? Or I don't know. I should check. Yeah, you should. You should. I got Brew Guru sitting right here on this <laughs> phone, baby. I can just open this up and see if I get a discount tonight. That's true. Um, all right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, we'll be back. I think our next live show is going to be October 17th. Um, and uh, Brian Cooper will be back, and uh, maybe Brian Shaw will be here too. I don't know. We're we going to be see. rotating some people. And then uh, if you want to be on the show, what I've done is transferred a lot of that stuff over to Brian Cooper because he has time and he's better at it than I am. The show definitely deserves uh, more attention than I'm able to give it. So uh, if you have any um, wish to be on the show, uh, let's just say... Brian at the at the bring network.com maybe I don't know just keep emailing me and I'll just forward over to him until I figure it out but uh anyway I just wasted a bunch of time that literally That's meant pretty nothing. awesome man. it's a bunch of uh information that I didn't rescind it at the end of it I didn't even need to say it in the first place you are a radio god I'm pretty friend. good dude don't worry about it um all right everybody it's been Dr. Homebrew and uh it's also been real take your antibiotics